Hello my fellow YouTubians, this is Pool Shark Wizard and today guys we are back in Minecraft Java 1.18 and we are going to be talking some bees, we're going to be talking some jack-o'-lanterns um, and some other things. So uh, I'm going to start out with this, right here is an automatic uh, beehive farm, if you guys would like a tutorial on it it's really good, I got it from Pixel Riffs. Uh, right here is honey blocks which basically says that honey is being made in these and then right here are the honeycomb blocks which basically means that honeycombs are being made here now both these are set up there's pretty much a um, some hoppers set up there's some bees right there and uh, so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool basically what happens with the honey is uh, once it reaches level three and like I said I got these ideas from pixel riffs um, it goes with a redstone idea here where um, however many items are in this, it uh, basically, because we don't want to harvest this until it reaches the level 6. So basically that's how this redstone set up. When it reaches level 6, right now, if we open up uh, F3 here, you guys can see it's only at a level 2 right now. So with that in mind, I just have it set to level 2 right here. And then once it reaches level 3, it goes up a little bit more. When it reaches level 4 and 5, it goes up to this block. And then um, it will activate this, which then pushes down some honey bottles in, or put, pushes down some regular glass bottles from the dispenser here. So as you can, can see, I have stacks and stacks of uh, bottles here. And each dispenser holds... Um, you want to fill this completely up because the dispenser, if you leave one open... Um, let's say if this wasn't here and it goes to activate it's gonna take the bottle and then it's gonna bring it right back into the dispenser but because I have it completely filled it basically forces it to go down through these uh, beehives here and then it takes a, um, a funnel ride right down to here so as you can see I have bottles of honey going on here and all the honeycombs going on here so um, it's a very very easy build very easy build now normally you can come across these things um, in the wild uh, This one's actually a made one. So I made this using um, three honeycombs, I believe and some uh, wood and You know naturally you can find these types of, of Beehives right back here. You can naturally find these out in trees and then to calm them down all you have to do is you stick a fire underneath it, like so. You just stick a fire right underneath it, and then it will um, basically smoke it, so then the bees will not get upset at you. So as you guys can see right now, this one here is at a honey level 5. So I can probably click on it, and I got three honeycombs out of it. So this just keeps on continually going and continually going. I have a couple more set up way out there. But I wanted to try it out and just see um, see how the automatic part works, which is pretty cool. Now, to, to basically to make the honey blocks, all you have to do is you take, uh, I think it's four bottles of honey right here. And then you can go right over to a workstation. Bunk, bunk, bunk. Oh, it does take four. So, so I, was, I was doing that wrong. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's repeat. This is the one I was looking for. So it takes four bottles of honey, which then gives you a honey block. And uh, that's what I put up right here. And then as far as the honeycombs goes, it's a, basically the exact same recipe. So if I grab one more honeycomb here uh, and go back to my uh, crafting table, if I do the exact same type of thing, boom, right there you get a honeycomb block. So that's how you can get those two, two types of blocks. Um, it's, they're, they're quite cool. Um, you know, the, the honeycomb one is brighter, which is really cool, has a nice pattern to it. And then uh, with these honey, um, honey blocks, what happens is because they're semi-sticky, so I'm just jumping and walking towards the block and see how it just slowly brings me down. Now, compare that to a honeycomb, you just go straight down. You know, it's just like a normal jump. But because there's honeycomb here, it just slows your, slows your descent down.
Now you can also um, drink honey, and that'll pair a little bit of little bit of health. So that kind of takes care of that. Um, I have four beehives in each one of these. They each hold uh, three bees, so that's definitely cool. And now we're going to talk about jack-o'-lanterns. So I do plan on building a uh, pumpkin farm in the future here. It'll probably be somewhere around over in this area also. But in case you guys didn't know, um, the jack-o'-lanterns, when you light them up, you can actually use them underneath water, which I showed in my previous video. You've seen those sitting underneath water. Now to make them, you have to have a shear. So you cut up the pumpkins, and then I just stacked them up. And then all you got to do is you just uh, right-click on all these pumpkins, which then gives you the pumpkin seeds. But uh, the pumpkin seeds, you get an overabundance of them because uh, you don't, you um, really, once you plant the uh, stalks for the pumpkins, you know, it'll, it'll just continually make them. So then, um, and I'm going to go throw this back in here because a bite of, oh, it brought up a, wow, that's interesting. Okay. So we're just going to throw the bottles back in this dispenser here. <coughs> and then we're going to grab my, um, my, my axe uh, and that's how you can break these down so once they're jack-o'-lanterns like this or uh, carved pumpkins I should say once they are carved pumpkins then it's very easy and, and I tend to use these quite a bit one because they're very easy to do two because I think they look pretty good like this one right here this one is a jack-o'-lantern right here and it's lit up so it gives off a decent amount of light now to turn these jack-o'-lanterns into, or to turn these carved pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns, all you have to do is throw a torch right below them, and then it turns it into a jack-o'-lantern. So if I hold down shift here, I make 32 of them. And now, as you guys can see, I got so many, so many pumpkin seeds from just doing those. You just get an overabundance of them. But that's okay, you can always get rid of them or what have you. And then, boom, there you go. So uh, in my home base, I use these as within the floor, within the ceiling, for some light sources if I don't want to use torches. Because technically, you're using a torch. And then I believe um, once these are made, uh, you can break them with any type of block. So you don't have to silk touch them. Now, I did not mention with the um, actual uh, beehives there, you do have to break those with a silk touch in order to get the beehive. Um, that goes along with the fire as well. So now I'm going to show you, and guess what, guys? I did find some carrots. So I found a, uh, a village. Um, where did I find that village at? I think I found it out that way someplace. I think I found it out that way someplace, and it was actually a lot closer than the other one. So when I was trying to find them before, I went in the completely wrong direction first village I stop out guess what they had four carrots so I do have plenty of carrots going on now plenty of carrots going on so I had four carrots and then you just keep on planting them over and over and over and you get a bunch so back to jack-o'-lanterns see all of these right here are all jack-o'-lanterns so basically you guys can see the face right there um, basically what what it does is instead of having to you know, have torches just scattered about. You can actually throw these down in the ground. You can throw them in the ceilings because I have them lighting up back here. I have them lighting up down here. <coughs> and then as you walk outside, you can see a jack-o'-lantern right there and other ones right down there. And I did do this edition also because I was kind of tired of walking all the way upstairs <laughs> in, order to, um, in order to get into the water. So I did do an addition based on what I said uh, yet on the last video is when you have doors in water, it creates an air pocket. So right now I just have a door here and I can boom, I can just walk right out in the ocean. So as you guys can see, you know, here's my door right down here. Basically, I just threw in a door, creates an air pocket, and now I have a door to go in and out of my home which is uh, definitely cool. You can see all the jack-o'-lanterns that I have around here because it is a nice underwater light source. So you don't necessarily need to have those underwater 
uh, light sources, you can just use jack-o'-lanterns. And those are usually pretty easy to come by, the pumpkins. And then, you know, you break them down, you get seeds, you carve them. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that's kind of where that's sitting at. And as you guys can see, I have uh, more 16 more sitting down here. And I do plan on doing a... Um, I do plan on doing a pumpkin farm. That might be the next episode, might not, not totally sure yet. Um, and then the other thing is cocoa beans. So I basically found some jungle logs and I just stacked the jungle logs because I couldn't, I didn't get a jungle sapling. So I just stacked up jungle logs and then I found some cocoa beans and then these things duplicate extremely fast also because when you break one of these things, you get... Let's see, I got three cocoa beans. So those can duplicate extremely fast as well. And then all you have to do is right click them, stick them to the tree, they'll grow up, and boom, you got cocoa beans. So uh, that's definitely cool. Now the uh, next thing that I did do is I set up a cleric. Um, now what the cleric is good for is taking all that rotten flesh that you get. However, you can also level up your cleric to have, when we click on them, you can level them up by grabbing emeralds. And I got, I got like 15 gold ingots here. So I can exchange those for emeralds. And then once he reaches a certain level, look at this, guys. You can get ender pearls. <coughs> so instead of having to go out and kill endermen like you normally would, uh, you can just use these. Same with redstone dust. Uh, here's the rotten flesh. So if you have a zombie spawner set up and you don't know what to do with all that rotten flesh, well, here you can just exchange it for emeralds, which is extremely cool. Now, the ender pearls, on the other hand, is um, you have to click on it and then you get one ender pearl. Now, what the ender pearls are good for is you turn them into eyes of ender. And by doing that, then you can then you can create ender chests, which is amazing because ender chests are like an extra pack that you can have along with you. So if you look here, I have four more ender chests in here and I have some eye of enders. Now to make the eye of enders, you actually have to use blaze powder, blaze powder. In order to get blaze powder, all you have to do is use blaze rods. And because I have that blaze farm, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. You just throw the blaze rods in by itself, and it gives you two blaze powders. To make an eye of ender, you take the blaze powder, you throw an ender pearl next to it, and boom, now you have eyes of ender. With the eyes of ender, then you can basically create ender chests. And ender chests are great. If you, I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with ender chests. More than likely. But if not, ender chests are great because when you open it up, you have these supplies in here, right? <clears throat> and no matter where you are, if you have another ender chest, now to break these down, you do have to have a silk touch uh, pickaxe or a silk touch to break the ender chest down. Otherwise, when you break it, you basically get obsidian, um, which is unfortunate. But if you have silk touch, then you can just lay it down. So if you remember what I had the ender chest there, I also put one right underneath my um, sugarcane farm here. And now if I open it up, all that same stuff is in there. So it's really great when you're out exploring, you have an ender chest in at home when you come across valuable things like diamonds, iron, gold, nether quartz. Any, anything that's um, valuable that you come across, you can just stick it in here. And then when you're out journeying around or what have you, you can just lay down an ender chest anywhere you want. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to throw down an ender chest here as well. Because there has been a few times where I wanted to get an ender chest in here. I don't want to put it too close to there so mobs climb it. So we're just going to set it down right there. Now, boom, it has the exact same supplies right in there. Now, however, you can't use this to um, basically set up like a in an auto-sorted machine because the ender chest will not, a funnel will not take the stuff out of an ender chest. So now I have to switch over to my 
silk touch pickaxe and then once you do that you pick the whole thing up with you and it's like you have extra storage with you right there so that is kind of the idea there um, we've covered the cocoa beans we've covered that um, what other things oh and while I was at the jungle and I removed the bamboo in here because man the bamboo was just it grows so incredibly fast I had no idea it grew that fast so like right here the bamboo was growing probably two or three times faster than the reeds were so it was just like yeah um, we're just we're I'm just gonna take them out because I have plenty of bamboo right now I don't need any more bamboo that's for darn sure so yeah that I mean it's 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 quite cool and then as far as the carrots go now the the thing that's that I wanted carrots for originally was to make night vision potions and to make the night vision potions it can take a little while however all you have to do is you grab your three water bottles one two and three you place them in a stand here one two three first thing and to run this you actually have to have that blaze powder again so the blaze power is um, you can use it more than one thing and then I just take a piece of nether wart we'll just take a piece of nether wart right here it'll go through you stick the nether wart up inside of there it'll let it uh, cook out and then uh, once the nether wart goes through then I use a golden carrot or a carrot I should say no a golden carrot sorry a golden carrot I use a golden carrot see how I made that little sound there now so you have awkward potions that's basically the start of every single potion is it's an awkward potion so you have to have the nether wart and that's why I have the nether wart farm so close now with the golden carrot once I throw the nether the golden carrot in here then these potions will turn into night vision potions and that's what I have right down here night vision and by doing that as you guys can see I have plenty of night vision right now and they're an eight minute duration well when they're first made I'll show you this when they're very first made they are oh I already do have some redstone so when they're very first made they're set for three minutes as you guys can see there well now what you can do is you can take a piece of redstone and the redstone will extend it so it's currently three minutes by placing that redstone in there it will turn it into eight minute potions so boy eight minutes that is uh that's quite a that's quite a while so when you're caving when you're underwater and, and I'm gonna exper I'm gonna show you this underneath the water so there we go the night vision potions are now at eight minutes um, and I'm just gonna keep a couple of them on me we'll keep some empty glass bottles down here and basically so what time is it it is uh, is it daytime okay so it is daytime and when I drink this you guys will see a difference I'll just walk outside I'll drink this see how it lights everything up it's uh it's pretty crazy and I might as well drink them both since I have two. but that's cool so look at how bright this was or this is now I mean you can see for a long ways now comparatively if I take a uh, we'll just do milk for example um, come on go to the door shift that's what I want now I've also collected some um, some milk and I think I left that over in the food area here Nope, maybe not well I got a bucket of milk someplace <laughs> maybe it's in the under chest there we go okay so there it is now um, so I'll, I'll also demonstrate this to you guys too now I do have a respiration helmet on so it's respiration too so as you guys can see my bubbles are going down extremely slow so see how bright everything is right now now if I drink that milk it basically takes away the effect and look at how much dimmer it is so then you basically need to have your your light there but 
when I do take that, and I'm just going to go down in this area because it is kind of, it's a little bit more dark down in here. So if I do take that night vision potion now, which I have sitting up here, it just immediately brightens everything up so you can see for a long ways that that is the same way with the um with going down in the caves so it uh definitely helps when you're trying to explore and you're going down in canyons and things like that because it is a uh, it's quite quite revealing where without that and without any light underneath the water you're uh you're basically <coughs> okay and it's nighttime now, so this this also works during the night. So if you guys see here, see how light that horizon is back there, which is just it's it's crazy. I mean, it almost looks like day, even though it is night. So it uh it definitely helps out. Now I haven't seen one of these villages before. It's like an abandoned village. Um, so that was basically kind of cool. But the night vision, that that is the thing that um, that I like so very much because, you know, it is it is nighttime right now. <laughs> it's freaking nighttime right now. So because it's nighttime, it's it's very difficult to see. Um, so I'm just going to dump out this bucket of water and then I'm going to run over to my cow farm and I'm going to I'm going to take off this night vision again. And the, the, the way to get milk is you just look at cows, you right click them on with a bucket, boom, you got milk. And I love milk. I go through a bunch of milk a week. I love my milk. So then I'll just drink this and you guys will see the difference. So now that effect is turned off and you can just see how much darker it is now. Now granted, I have a lot of torches over around there so it's lit up, but you guys can see the difference and, and the difference is huge. So uh, let me know, guys, if you guys would like to see um, tutorials on these. Um, next one, I'm probably going to do a pumpkin farm. Um, and uh, let me know if you guys would like to see a tutorial. But once again, I got these from Pixel Rifts. He does an excellent job of, of explaining everything. I'll leave his uh, link down in the description. But uh, guys, uh, this is Pool Shark Wizard. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always. And I will talk to you guys next time. Take care. And bye-bye.